So um, I was a senior at the University of Richmond, and I had just come back from about it was eight or nine months of being abroad in Italy. So it was my first semester back. Um, I was 21, and um, I'm from a really small town, so it was kind of like my first real foray into the world and to see bigger places and understand more of how people felt about Americans abroad. You know, it started to kind of chip away at some of the ideas I thought about who we are in the world, I guess. And um, so it was a really formative time for me, and it was a beautiful morning. I mean, like perfect, crystal clear blue sky. I got up really early because I had an exam that day. And um, I'd been studying, I'd been reading. All my roommates were gone, and so I had like the house to myself that morning, and it was great. And I was walking to class across campus, and I was whistling. And uh, I hadn't, you know, I had like a Nokia cell phone, so I hadn't turned it on. I only turned it on to call my parents, I think, at that time. Um, hadn't looked at the computer or anything or news or TV. So I was whistling, and a friend stopped me, and she said, you, you look really happy. I don't think you've—do you know what's happened? And I was like, no. And she was like, well, come with me. And so we walked through the commons, and we were right there, and there were people crowded around TVs all over the commons and the, at the university. People were crying. People were just, like, staring in disbelief. And I saw the second plane hit um, because they were, they were filming it live at that point. And, and it was just total shock and disbelief. Um, my uncle was working downtown at that time. My, I had two cousins and my aunt and uncle that lived in Manhattan that I would go see frequently. Um, and so no one knew how to get in touch with him. We were all calling, frank, like frantically trying to get in touch with him. He ended up walking from like Wall Street all the way back to 74th and Lexington, you know, um, took him hours. So no one, he, he found like a, someone let him borrow a phone or something and called to let us know he was okay at some point during that day. But I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I mean, because that, the, it was so, there was so much dissonance between this like beautiful day, perfect fall day and this like unthinkable tragedy. And it was one of the first experiences of that in my life where, like, honestly, sometimes even on these like really beautiful fall days, I'll still get that kind of nauseated feeling that I had. It's like an association because it was so strong for me. Um, I didn't know what to do. I mean, we all sat talking, not really talking, just like being together felt right. So I, I walked to the class I was going to and it was like a class on the history of work in Europe. <laughs> and I said, this just feels totally ridiculous for us to try to hold class. I mean, I just, I don't know how you guys feel, but I feel like it's almost disrespectful. Um, and everybody, so then we ended up just kind of sitting and talking to each other for a few minutes. And then we all went back. And the rest of the day was just like walking through a dream, like a, like a nightmare where you just, you don't quite, I don't quite remember exactly what we did. There were planes and helicopters overhead all day long, uh, probably because of our proximity to um, D.C. and and different like um, armed force bases and stuff around around the area. But it was um, it was a moment I think everybody knew that it was seminal for us, and it. Um, that nothing would be the same going forward. I think that was, even when people tried to just kind of walk through the days, I think it was, it was just, uh, it was so bizarre and tragic. But it was a, it was a real sea change after that, I think, for all of us.
mirada vacía que me habla volúmenes día tras día te creo te creo aunque falte calor en tu tocar mano en mano Recuerdo si algo que no vi, dolor que ríe al consumir, vacío al que yo confiado, contento y corriendo un día caí, sufriendo por mi preso, vivir de ti no puedo desistir, perdido en ese mar me falta solo esperar contigo un día morir. living downtown D.C. near the zoo, so in an area called Mount Pleasant. Um, I had just, it was, I had gotten up early that morning, which was, you know, not normal for me, but I had gotten up early because I had taken a friend to drop him off at, at, at school at UDC. And on the way home, I had this, when I did that, uh, I, I was called my, my nana, my, my kind of, my, my grandmother just to check in. And I remember calling her and just like normal, oh, hi, how are you? And she's like, oh. And it was probably early. It was early. I'm not sure of the time. I don't remember the times of when everything happened, but it was like, oh, are you um, are you listening to the news? You know, I kind of had NPR on, but I wasn't focused. And I remember they were talking to someone who was, you know, and then soon I started to listen. I was like, oh. Whoa, you know, like they they were in that moment talking to some, inter, like on the phone with someone who is was either in the building that they just got hit, or I think the building, whichever building was second, like across the way, and they were looking out the window and they were reporting. And we have so and so on the phone, and they 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 see flames, and you know, everyone at that, I mean, the whole day, everyone was speculating, right? What what in the world? And she, and so I'm on the phone, and we're talking, and. So got back to 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 my home uh, and just remember, you know, I had roommates, a bunch of roommates, and we, um, you know, we everyone's sort of waking up because we're in our twenties and nobody gets up early, and we're all artists, so so we 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 slowly everyone wakes up and starts to realize what's happening, and someone had a 
little TV. We didn't have a really TV. And we, uh, you know, I just remember, you know, you slowly start to realize what's happening, you know, and some of us have the radio on and we start to call, you know, start try and call people. And I just remember the, the situation just escalating so fast, like within that minute, the time that, you know, that mo moment I was driving home and then I got home and then it was just like, I think by then a building had fallen, like no, or no one knew what happened. You know, it was just like, there's more planes coming and uh, there's one headed for DC. Of course, of course it's headed, of course there's a plane headed for DC. I mean, why not? I mean, DC is the capital. So I remember like, well, we're in DC and we're very close to, I feel like a target. And I was like, well, what do, what do I do if there's a plane that starts, what do I run? Like, where am I going to run to? I mean, I, it was really just mass confusion in my head. And once the Pentagon got hit, I feel like that was the plane that they're like, there's a plane headed, or no, the plane that went, the other plane that crashed in uh, Pennsylvania. I feel like that was the plane that was going to come to D.C. or it didn't or it circled or something weird. I've never gone through anything like this. I've never experienced that, and I never have since. Yeah, I had definitely gotten up early that morning. Uh, at the time, I was doing uh, decorative interior painting in the in the West End in Richmond, Virginia. And I had reached my client's house and set up everything, had just, just begun to paint. And I would always get there before, you know, they would kind of wake and leave the house. And I knew her husband was already gone, but so I'm painting. And I hear sobbing, I hear sobbing, and I, you know, put down my brush and kind of tiptoed my way through the kitchen into the living room where, you know, just followed the, the sound. And, you know, I asked her if she was okay, uh, everything is, is everything okay? And after I had, after I got no response was when I looked at the TV, and I'll never forget that image on the TV, and Something so massive, you know, um, I think for most people, definitely for me, it's, it, it just doesn't register right away. You know, like when you lose a loved one, it's just like, like, really, you know? So I remember seeing the TV and, and, I, and I remember my first thought, it's kind of ridiculous, but I, I, my first thought was, oh my God, it's one of my favorite monuments in the world being destroyed. Seconds later, you know, when I looked at her face and just saw the tears rolling down is when it hit me like, the massive loss of human life that was surely to, to happen that morning. And then it hit me, you know, my friends in New York and tears, my hairs are standing up, but tears welled up in my ears. And once again, I said, I, you know, are you okay? Can I go get you anything? She's like, no, I'm fine. Thank you. And I, I remember grabbing my stuff and, you know, quick as I could and, and went home and Really, the, the rest of the day is a blur. What I did, you know, who I was with, where I went. But I was reminded of the feeling that I had that day. Last year, after the initial lockdown, you know, because of the pandemic, I remember my first time that I left the house, after I'd been in the house. I don't know how many days we've been in the house, but to go somewhere to get something. I forgot what it was. But just this feeling in the air, you know, just something thick and uh, uncertain and, you know, weird in the air. And uh, I remember that day last year and then thinking that's how I felt that day. It took a while that, for it to hit, everything to hit. And then, you know, and then everything settled in, like the worrying about the friends and who can I call. This is back before I had, had a cell phone, certainly. But yeah, I, I, that's, that's what I remember, is where I was and the feeling that I had for the rest of that day after the shock, you know, which took only seconds to, you know, for the shock to turn into sadness. Ya no estás, la mente 
se me ha vuelto a comportar y el odio no se confundirá con amor, con pasión, con deseos de quedar. Espiritual y carnal, mi cuerpo ya no se gastará y el dolor no volverá a hablar de traición, de perdón, de la milla libertad. Piedra venenosa en el jardín, la falta de mi bien será tu fin. cual ya está sanando mi vivir ahora ven a por allá bendición ella lejos quedará y al hablar ya me comprenderán sin error, sin temor mostraré sinceridad Mi cariño evadirá 